Hey guys, we are back. Quick games, chop, chop, chop. Not much of a break. These Thai teams are powering through. That means I have to power through as well, guys. So, but yeah, welcome back to the Heroes Global Summer Circuit. This is the Thailand Finals. We have a rubber set on our hands. Play 10, lose 11, going up against Hot Hit Gaming. Both teams trying to secure the final slot available in the Thailand uh, qualifications and they are waiting they're going to be playing against GDG9 in the finals for uh, seeding as well as prize money but we're still looking for our final team to represent Thailand in C regionals happening next week uh, we're going into I think our final draft guys so let's take a look it is going to be Dragonshire I think yes Dragonshire is going to be the map here that decides the fate this is the first time we're actually going into a rubber set I personally have not casted um, a best of three that has actually gone to three games, which is interesting. So, play 10, lose 11 on the blue side. Hot hit gaming going to be on the red. As you can see, it's one apiece right now. I'm confused by this. Rexa being banned out. Do they know something that we don't know? I do know that Rexa uh, has gained some popularity in certain places and certain countries. Uh, on Dragonshire, I haven't seen Rexa played all too much here, so I'm a bit confused by this ban a little bit. Maybe they know something about hothead gaming that they, we don't know. They definitely have been screaming a lot more against each other for sure because they are both the two tied teams. But Rexa being banned out here on Dragonshire gets me to thinking, what do they have up their sleeves? Kelta is going to be banned out here as the first ban for Hot Hit Gaming, and it does look like they are going to pick up the Tasada. Will this be the Illidan Tasada pick? That is the question. But for those of you just tuning in, as I mentioned, this is the Heroes of the Storm uh, Global Summer Circuit. This is the Thailand Finals happening right now. Tracer, unfortunately, still at a 0% win rate. Ah, <sighs> that's so sad. We, we can't see a Tracer winning again thus far, so... I'm just always going to go with the team that doesn't pick Tracer, I guess. But hopefully one day we will see her make waves in the competitive scene. But yeah, getting back into this game, we did see a Tasada being shadow picked, but they did instead go with the Falstad uh, pick up here, along with the Muradin. So that's pretty two strong staple picks. Again, we have not seen a single game without a Muradin either whole the, the whole day. We've always going to be seeing a Muradin and the ETC. I think those are pretty staple picks themselves as well. So, Muradin and Falstad are going to be the first two picks uh, for Hot Hit Gaming. Let's see who play 10, lose 11, actually follow up with it. Again, thank you guys for all of those you, of you tuning in. Thank you for the support, those of us you who have been with us since the morning. I know some of you are tuning in from the US, so it's really early morning for you guys, either that or really late for you guys. So again, thank you for tuning into this stream and cast. My name is Arctic Shadow, and I know some of you have been asking where Baybell is as well because he usually is the caster for this channel. As this, he has decided to retire for now. I think due to real life commitment issues, he has had to take uh, a break from this. So hopefully we will get to see him in next week's C regionals. Maybe he will be guest casting if he has the time. Uh, maybe in the future, sometime in the future as well. But for the meantime, I will try to feel into his big shoes. Figuratively and literally. Actually, I don't know that. I don't know if he has big legs, big feet. But yeah. I also want to give a shout out to Zenden and Wayne who in the background are constantly doing the production, guys. You guys see all the replays, as some of you mentioned. Uh, all this technology that we have is due to the production team in the background. So do give them a shout out as well. Uh, they're working hard behind the scenes to bring you guys this production on a Sunday night. It's not just me here, okay guys? I'm not handling this all by myself. My job is just to talk to you guys, so... Tasada going to be picked up here by Play 10. Does that mean that we're going to see an Illidan? Because generally that's the direction that you want to go, but we do see a Thrall being picked up by Play 10 instead. Will we see a Illidan ban by Hot Hit Gaming? That is the question now. They have not picked it up just yet, but generally when you go at Tasada, you will see a secondary support, maybe in the form of the Tiranda or a Rega. But again, this is going to be the decider match. Between these two teams, Dragon Shire is the one to play for as Hot Hit Gaming goes up against Play 10, lose 11. They are going to have a pretty hard time here for both teams. Right now, I'm liking Hot Hit Gaming's draft so far. It all, of course, will depend on what Play 10 actually do. 
uh, pick up in their next two draws. We do see Tiranda being banned out. So yeah, they want to reject. Well, they want to not reject. They want to cancel out the fact that uh, Hot Hit Gaming picks up the Tiranda. It does look like the Shadow picking the Illidan here though on play 10. This is confusing me a little bit. They don't plan to pick up the Illidan? Why was it banned out so late then? I don't really think Hot Hit Gaming is actually going for the Illidan. They might have something up their sleeves. Maybe Abatha into Rega? Into Illidan? Something like that? I'm not sure, but... This, this is this is really interesting draft, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Again, in the comment section below. Uh, not comment section below, but in the Twitch chat. Do let me know what you guys think about uh, the draft so far and the rate that it is going. Illidan being the fourth ban here after they've picked up this Tassada, known for the combination of Tassada Illidan anyway. I don't think that Hot Hit Gaming was actually going to go for the Illidan. We did see them shadow pick it a bit earlier. But after picking up the Muradin and the Falstad, I don't think they were going to go that route. So play 10, lose 11 right now with the Leeming, Tassada, and the Thrall. Now being shadow picked is the Dhaka on Hot Hit Gaming. This will be the second time we've seen him today. I believe in the first time around, he did not actually win in Towers of Doom, if I'm not mistaken. That was the map uh, where the Dhaka was picked up, and he didn't really perform that well. But they don't have the support just yet. I think Rhaegar will be a good pick here if they want to go a solo support. I don't think Uther will make a huge impact on hot hit gaming because you have the Haka and Muradin in the front lines. And Falstart is one of those that actually goes forward as well. So Uther wouldn't be ideal in terms of AoE heals. I think Rhaegar would be the better choice. But it does look like they will pick up the Grey Mane, allowing Uther to be picked up by Play 10 Lose 11. It, what would be interesting to me to see is if they pick up the Uther and the Rhaegar just to spite Hothead Gaming. Of course, I know that's not going to happen, but it just would be funny. ETC now being picked up along with probably Uther or Rhaegar, maybe? I definitely don't agree if they go with a solo Tassada support. It does look like Rhaegar is being shadow picked here, so unfortunately for hit, Hothead Gaming, uh, they might have to go with the Uther. Or maybe even a Lieutenant Morales. Let's see if they go that route. Come on, guys. I'm channeling all my energy into Hot Hit Gaming to picking up Lieutenant Morales. We did see him picked up one time yesterday, and he actually won. So 100% win rate, man. Better than Tracer. <laughs> so come on, Lieutenant Morales, Hot Hit Gaming. Let's, let's see a, a medic in this game. Of course, this is the game decider, so I don't think they're going to go with a risky play like that. So I do expect Uther or Malfurion. Yeah, Malfurion's pretty decent as well. There's not a whole lot of bursts from Play 10 aside from the Li Ming. Uh, Troll does give a decent amount of damage and burst as well, but I think that is okay. Uh, overall, the draft is going to be Li Ming, Tassada, Thrall, ETC, and Rhaegar for Play 10, Lose 11, Hot Hit Gaming. is going to get the Malfurion, Greyman, the Haka, Muradin, and Faustad. Very tanky lineup for Hot Hit Gaming. They do have pretty decent DPS in Greyman as well as Faustad as well. Sorry, Hot Hit Gaming, not Hot Hit Greyman. I think I said that early on. Uh, but yeah, so I don't really know who to give the draft to. It's a bit unorthodox on both sides. I don't really understand the Tassada pickup for Play 10, Lose 11 if they were going to go with the Rega anyway. Uh, but I guess Hot Head Gaming has a slightly better draft to me. I just feel like that team has a slightly more synergy. They do have the Dehaka to rotate between those lanes, a bit of a global presence as well as the Falstad. So they have huge global presence in Hot Hit Gaming. They should be able to push out those lanes and get to fights pretty easily. They have quite a number of stuns in Muradin and the Haka. Greymane to provide the damage as well as that foul stun. I think they should be okay. Their sustained damage is pretty high. Though they are going up against a double support combination. They do have Troll and ETC in the front lines. Just the Leeming to provide the majority of the DPS though. That's my concern here for Play 10 is that they only have the Li Ming in the background. And if Li Ming falls to that Grey Ming or Falstad, they're going to have a pretty hard time. So overall, I think I have to personally give my my, my personal uh, win to... Um, hold on, I'm trying to fix uh, the in-game lobby thing here. Give me a second. But I, I'm going to have to give the draft to Hot Hit Gaming here, in my opinion. I think they have this one... Uh, of course, this is going to be the rubber set. So all to play for here. Oops, sorry. All to play for here uh, between these two teams. Play 10, lose 11, going up against Hot Hit Gaming. 
in this game decider right now. It is a best of three in this loser's bracket. It's one to one in uh, in favor of neither team. So everything to play for. Again, thank you for tuning in. For those of you just watching, this is the Heroes Global Summer Circuit happening right now. This is the Thailand Finals. One of these teams are going to represent Thailand in the C Regionals happening next weekend. Next Saturday and Sunday, guys. Make sure you guys bookmark those calendars. Tune in because we are going to have the C Regionals where only one will come out on top to represent Southeast Asia in DreamHack in Sweden sometime in June. So Renovasha won in the previous C Regionals. Will they be able to retain their title or will their close uh, rivals in Resurgence be able to overthrow them and take the championship once again? Or will one of the Thai or Malaysian teams step up? You know, being the underdogs, we did see Leicester City win the, the League Cup this season time around. This might be the time for you know, an underdog like Malaysia or Thailand to step up. It's definitely possible. So make sure you guys tune in next weekend. Right now, we're still looking for our final representation in Thailand between these two teams to join GDG9 in the finals to play for the Thai nation and fly the Thai flag. So I believe now all the players have actually joined up into the game. Just waiting for the game to start up now. Do make sure you head over to Twitter and tweet at this HGC. S E A H G C S E A. That's the tweet handle to tweet at. Uh, tell us your predictions. Tell us your shout outs uh, to your favorite teams, for your friends, your favorite casters, whoever it may be. Just do your quick shout outs and you will be featured on the Twitch stream. So make sure you do that and also do let me know about what you think about the draft in the Twitch chat. I will check them out after each game to read what you guys have to say. But I believe we are in the loading screen right now. Over in Hot Hit Gaming, we do see four murky portraits. That's pretty cute and one monkey. But yeah, we are going into the game now. It is going to be Dragon Shire, guys. Play 10 going up against Hot Hit Gaming. Quick sh shout out to all our sponsors before we start up here. Razer, our official peripheral sponsor, as well as XSplit, our official streaming partner. So without these sponsors, we wouldn't be able to bring these live broadcasts to you guys. We are going into the game. Again, play 10, lose 11 are going to be on the blue team. Lily, 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 Lily is going to be playing the troll this time. Um, ETC is going to be played by Scarecrow. Coupe is going to be on his Li Ming. Kicharak is going to be on his Rega yet again. Freedom is going to be on the Tassada as a pause is called out. Over on the red side though, we will have Hot Head Gaming. Alice is going to be playing the Malfurion. Okay, I can't really see with the dark screen. Budapest is going to be on the Muradin. Peiji on the Haka. Arata on Greymane. Alice on Malfurion. And TNK going to be on the false stuff. The map is going to be Dragon Shire, guys. Ten seconds. Everything to play for between these two teams. Let's see what happens. So both teams making their way towards the middle lane now. I think they're just going to try and set up something in the middle. We do have a lot of a global presence uh, team here for the red side in Hot Hit Gaming. They do have the Dahaka as well as the Falstar. That could help them out in the long run. Now Kichara getting in position first. He is going to be spotted out by the Murad. He's going to go in. But here comes the blue team though. ETC from the side. Power style not going to connect onto anyone just yet. Malfurion with the root not going to connect onto anyone as well. As both teams just disengaged. That could have turned out really bad for the red team. As they went in. The blue side knew exactly what they were trying to do here. Stunned now by the uh, Muradin onto Coupe. He is going to get a shield though. So that's going to negate quite a bit of damage. Both teams is converging in onto this middle lane. Clearing out the creep waves. Now we see Tassada making his way towards the top. Troll and the Rega heading towards the bottom along with that Muradin. We do see the Haka at the top lane now helping out in rotating. Here we see Muradin dwarf toss away back to safety as ETC went in for the power slide. Malfurion Root not going to connect and Lightning Rod now doing quite a bit of damage onto ETC. He's going to get hit healed up though by the Rega. Tassada is going to leave that top lane. The Haka is going to push it out a little bit but he does look like he's rotating back towards the top lane. Shrines are going to be activated in about 3 seconds. So who the Sun Shrine is probably going to get taken by the, the Haka. He should be fine there. Middle lane though, we could see some action here. Troll coming in from side. Chain lane is going to be used. Just to do a bit of harass, Li Ming should be able to get the Moon Shrine pretty easily as well. Tassada now making his way towards that Sun Shrine. Peiji on the Dahaka wants, some, wants to stop him though. Forces him back. Red team now are going to get control of the Moon Shrine themselves. So they will have both Shrines 
uh, in control right now, but I don't think for long. Here comes Troll. The Haka has to be careful. Gonna get rooted down. He's just trying to hold this out for as long as he can to buy some time for the, his team to get it, but I don't think he will be able to do so. He's gonna have to dig his way out of there. And that's going to allow the Tassada to get the Sunshine at the top lane. And in fact, now it is the opposite way around as Leeming takes control of the Moonshine at the bottom. This is going to give them control of both Shrines. Will they be able to pick off the Dragon though? I don't think so. As we do see Muradin making their way to the bottom. So it's just a bunch of rotations right now happening between the two. Now at the middle lane though, we do see the Lightning Rod coming out of Coupe, dropping really low. Final hit going to come out and down goes the Li Meng. Unfortunate there for him, was not able to be kept alive by the Rega, who's hiding in the brush right now. Troll taking quite a bit of damage himself. Red Team now pushing in. Root going to connect onto the ETC, but no follow-up just yet. The Haka going in. Picking up the Sunshine here. Tasada not going to be able to stop him. Guys, you guys want to maybe head towards that middle to take control of the Dragon. Your teammate has already done all the work in taking the Sunshine. Tasada is in fact going to be able to collect it back again. They do pick up themselves a siege camp, which will have them push at the bottom lane. Troll is at the bottom as well, so at any time he should be able to pick it up. Now Scarecrow on the ETC going to get stunned out here. No power slide just yet. <laughs> we do have our first Twitch shout out. Thank you, Arctic Shadow, doing it. Mr. Zolmasak, thank you for the shout out to you guys, uh, to you too. Thank you for tuning in and supporting it. Pick up Mention will shift himself out of there. And Peiji will be able to get it. Now again, the red team going to get control of both those shrines. But they don't have control of the middle lane. Here comes the rest of the blue side though. Rotating towards that bar top lane. So this is turning out to be just a rotation game so far. Not many kills. 2-1 to one in favor of the red team. Grey main actually falling there. Bottom lane though, Troll could be in some trouble himself. He's not going to survive that as he tried to solo take that Moon Shrine. Unfortunately for him, he's going to fall here. And we see a power slide in by ETC onto two. Kupe having to back off. Rega not able to get in position to heal him up. He's going to go one round just to get off the chain heal. Top lane though, we are going to see a Greymane jumping in onto the Tassada who is forced to back off. And that does mean that Greymane will be able to get the top Sun Shrine. Bottom lane though, we do see the Haka latching onto ETC. That could have been trouble for him. He is able to power slide his way back to safety though. And he should be fine. Again, they're just back and forth right now. Four minutes into this game, neither team actually picking up the dragon just yet. Again, they're just back and forth right now. Four minutes into this game, neither team actually picking up the dragon just yet. Right, mind you, this is the first one. Bottom lane, we do see an ETC power slide. Malfurion root not going to connect as the roots spawn pretty slowly. So again, both teams just doing a really good job in soaking. It's pretty neck and neck in terms of that EXP. Neither team budging just yet on the dragon. And the longer this drags out, it's just the, the more climactic it's going to be. Now Troll at this bottom lane, taking quite a bit of damage from the Lightning Rod and the Hammerang, dropping pretty low. Here comes the Troll though, ETC going to get a power slide in onto both the Muradin and the Falstad. He's going to barrel roll into a really awkward situation for himself and gets taken down. So that's a nice pickoff for him at that bottom lane for the blue side. Top lane though, Peiji trying to stop the take of this Sunshine, will not be able to do so. Rega will actually get control of it and that's going to allow the Dragon to be activated by the blue side. Here comes the tr ETC trying to maybe pick up the Dragon, I don't think he's going to be able to do so. Arata is just trying to hide in the brush to stop this from happening. It does look like the Haka is making his way towards the top lane. Here comes the foul start to try and stop the push again. ETC dropping low, will have to back off. Now the red team is going to push back and they are just trying to control this middle here. Not allowing them to actually go for it. Here comes Coupe trying to channel it out. Will not be able to do so. But here comes Tassada from the side as well. Raymond is at the bottom so he will be able to stop this push here by the blue side. Root now in onto that foul side. Peiji running away. Arcane Op going to connect. He is going to burrow himself into the ground keeping himself alive for now. Will the heals be enough to sustain him? Yes it will. He will be able to back off safely and Herf back to heal up. So again, no one getting the Dragon just yet. We're almost hitting that level 10 mark too. Play 10, lose 11, slightly ahead in that EXP uh, goal. Peiji gonna dig his way towards that top lane and clear out the creep wave. 
Kasada there as well to try and soak a little bit more. We are going to get a level 10 available on play 10 now on the blue side. Let's take a look at what they pick up. Wave of Force yet again picked up by Li Meng. Not too sure why he doesn't, just doesn't want to go for the Disintegrate. Now Muradin jumping in, just totally missing out on that uh, Storm Ball. Not too sure where that was flying off to. Probably to King's Landing or something. But at the top lane... Sunshine is going to be taken by the blue side. Peiji trying to stop it out yet again. Fausta, your friend's fighting over there. You might want to help him. Force wall going to be used to try and block him out. Here comes Alice, healing him up again. Mighty Gus going to be used to try and disengage, but TNK is in the wrong side of it. Malfurion going to pop the trank. Sundering going to be used a bit too preemptively. TNK trying to run for his life here. He's going to get rooted though, and he's probably going to get taken down by the Thrall. Not too sure again what the Fausta is doing. Face palm. As now the Rhaegar comes in, Kichiro going to be able to finish off Malfurion. That Tranquility is going to not help him anymore. Freedom now taking quite a bit of damage. Force Wall going to be used, but he's going to be kept alive by the Rhaegar. And this is looking really bad for Hothead Gaming. They're in full retreat mode now as Arata and Budapest, the sole survivors of their team. Not sole, but the two survivors of their team. As the blue side will come out on top with three kills as well as that Dragon. Pulling one level ahead right now. So play 10, lose 11 are doing it, guys. They're doing it. They're pushing down this middle lane. Towers are going to fall with the help of the Dragon. The rest of the raid team are going to spawn right back up. The Haka being the last one to spawn up, but he's going to be able to TP towards the middle. In fact, he TPs towards the top lane to try and pick up on some EXP. Dragon's still very much alive here at this middle lane, but the Haka will be in some trouble himself. As we did see ETC move towards the front, trying to maybe set up a kill. Unfortunately, not going to be able to do so. Bottom lane, Greymane just trying to continue on with the soak. Hot hit gaming are a level behind, but not out of this game just yet. We've seen it done before. We saw resurgence come back from a tree level deficit. As now we see a latch in onto that ETC. Root not going to connect as he does actually fly and forward. What is that? Mighty Gus there. He goes in front, pushes him against the wall. False start. Not too sure what he's doing. He needs to step it up a little bit, I have to say. He hasn't really been on point with his decision making thus far. Now Budapest having to run away. That mighty gust used ETC comes in with the power slide onto Arata. He's in some trouble here. Dropping really low. Rhaegar gonna pop up the ancestral healing onto ETC and he's gonna be just fine. Greymane now surviving by the skins of his teeth. Alice though having to pop the Tranquility Key to keep the team alive. Budapest going a bit too far in front. Gonna be able to Dwarf Toss out of that uh, Power Slide. That was pretty lucky on his part. Troll just picking up a Siege Camp by himself and the back lines. Greymane going to the top lane to push out the lanes a bit. Tasada at the bottom could be in some trouble. Here comes the Muradin. No Stormbolt just yet. He is pushing forward. Stormbolt finally gonna be used but the shield is going to be there to negate the damage. Level 13 available on the blue side. Let's take a quick look again at those talents as we have some time. Rega with the Ancestral Healing. ETC going to pick up the Mosh Pit. Force Wall on Tasada. Sundering on the Thrall. And Wave of Force on Li Ming. Again, I don't know why they like to go with the Li Ming Wave of Force so much. But I would like to see them pick up a Disintegrate once in a while. Uh, over on the Red Team Hot Hit Gaming, they do pick up the Avatar on the... Uh, Muradin, the Dahaka pick. I, I keep forgetting the name. Isolation on the Dahaka. Go for the Throat on Greymane. Tranquility on Malfurion. And of course, Mighty Gus that we've seen on the false start. That hasn't had a huge impact yet in this game. Bottom lane, Tasada has to be careful. Going to get stunned out here by the Stormbolt. But that's going to be all as there's no follow up here from the rest of his team. They are just backing off, trying to take this camp. Muradin is just going to buy some time for them. As the blue side themselves get a piece of the camp pie at the bottom lane. Shrines are about to be activated soon and we saw how long it take it took for the first shrine uh, to actually go in favor of the dragon bottom lane though. Now the blue team does look like they want to maybe set something up here. Scarecrow trying to come in from the side with the ETC. Not going to be able to do so. Peiji at the top lane will get control of the upper sun shrine. Bottom lane, the blue side will get control of the moon shrine for now. But here we see Muradin going with the stun onto Kicharak. But his team is in the background. Here we see an ETC power slide. Budapest will be able to get out of there with the Dwarf Toss. Top lane, we do see a skirmish going on between both the, the Haka as well as the Troll. Not too sure who's winning in that fight right now. Both sides just seem to be low on HP. Now, Muradin going in for the steal onto the Moon Shrine. It does look like they will be able to get it just in the nick of time. Controlling both Shrines? No. Actually, Troll will have the top one. No. The Haka will be able to pull him out of there. Not too sure what he's doing. 
And now, middle lane, we're going to see ETC and uh, Kicharak on the Rega rotating towards that area. Graeme now joining his partner at the top lane. They're going to have to back off, though, with the rest of the blue team now pushing down that top lane. Blue side will be able to get control of the Sunshine. As it does look like Li Ming is making his way, her way towards the bottom as well. While the blue side tries to secure middle. But I don't think they're going to be able to do so with the Haka at the top lane. So again, they're just trading it off. The both teams are doing a good job not giving anything away right now. Muradin now could be in some trouble. ETC power slide. He's all alone. He's going to be able to jump away. Root not going to connect. Sundering going to be used just to push him away. Avatar going to be used to push him back. Mosh Pit onto nothing there. With a Mighty Gust to cancel it out of the nothing Mosh Pit. As now we see Budapest again going in with the Avatar this time around, hitting on Scarecrow. Again, another premature ancestral healing going to be used up here. I don't think it was needed. Alice with the Ice Block, just trying to keep herself alive with the Tranquility already propped. But the blue side, they are going to get the Dragon though, unfortunately for them. Tasada is going to fall at the top lane, I believe, to the Dehaka. But the blue side now are knocking in on this middle lane. Budapest going in. Thunderclap. Trying to set something up here, but the dragon is going to rotate towards the bottom. He wants to try and get this bottom fort. Alice is there trying to stop him, but what can a soul Malfurion do? Nothing much. But with the help of his team now, as the rest of them come back in, here comes the Muradin. They want to take him down. Of course, the dragon does not go down too easily because dragons are coming, guys. Dragons are coming. Top lane, we do see Kicharak and Coupe pushing down the top lane. Peiji there as well to try and support them. Middle side, we see them rotating around towards that top. The Haka has to be careful himself. Blue side is going to be able to back off safely for now. Dragon is has 14 seconds left on it. It does look like he's going to be able to take down the bottom fort. So objective secured for him, but he probably needs to back off here. He's going to get latched back on. I don't think that's going to do anything. The Dragon is just going to kick that Fausta back behind his wall and say, you know what, get away from me. And he's going to spawn right back off. Of course, it's just a troll, so he should be fine. Level 17 to 16 in favor of PTLD right now. Play 10, lose 11. Right now, a stun in onto Budapest. He's going to be able to dwarf toss himself back to safety, so he should be fine as the red team picked themselves up a siege camp. Blue team are going to do this exact same thing. So right now, both teams are slowing down the game a little bit. Not wanting to overextend. Both teams having that level 16 as well. Equal on talent tiers for the meantime. Again, remember, this is the rubber set. It's a best of three. Both teams taking one game apiece between Play 10, Lose 11, and Hothead Gaming. So everything to play for. Qualification for C Regionals for next week between these two teams is what separates between one game. So both, neither team wants to make any mistakes here. You can see both teams playing it pretty cautiously. Ritzy rotating towards the bottom, picking up themselves another siege camp. The game has slowed down a little bit and taking a look at talent here so far. We do see the talent build being uh, the teleport build being picked up by Li Ming. Uh, nothing that stands out too out of the ordinary for me. The slow totem on the Rega for utility. Tasada is there as well. I just want to see better Mighty Gust coming up from TNK right now. Because he has not used that effectively thus far. Shrines are going to be activated in about 30 seconds now. Budapest is going to spot in onto ETC. He gets the stun off onto the ETC as well. Has to be careful. Root not going to connect. Shrines are going to be activated. The Haka is at the top lane. He hasn't joined up with the rest of his team yet. Troll is waiting in the brush here. Has to be careful. Here comes the ETC. No power slide just yet. There you go. Power slide in connecting onto Budapest. Playing the Muradin. He is going to go in though. Avatar not used just yet. Mosh Pit connecting on one only. Mighty Guy's going to be used again only on the Troll to disengage for himself. But down goes the Troll. Scarecrow now in disarray. Ellis is going to pop up the Tranquility and that's going to keep his team alive. They are doing it right now. Freedom dropping really low. He's going to have to use the Dimensional Shift to get away. Kicharak running for his life. Dropping really low. Nice force uh, wall there to stop the push. Only the ETC falling. 
that could have been much dis more disastrous for the blue side, but they will be able to pick off two kills in the form of Thrall and ETC. All that with the Haka coming in late to the party as well. So really well placed by then. The Marsh Pit only connecting on one. Mighty Guts used on just the Troll. But that did set up for the kill. Now Tassada could be in some trouble himself. Dimensional Shift going to be able, you, able to use to get away. And they will get control of this Moonshine. And that's going to give them their first dragon of this game. What is the, Why are they going to be able to do with it? That's the question though. Kitchera going to be able to kick back behind the walls. As they push in on the middle lane. They need to try and secure a few of these objectives, of course, though. Peiji now knocking away. The well is going to go down. He's going to keep Kupe again. Oh, no. Actually, Kupe is going to be able to teleport away from the kick. Uh, Fort, though, is going to fall here due to the lightning rod along with the DPS coming from the red side. It does look like they want to continue pushing down uh, these towers. I think they should be able to do so as well. Towers are gonna fall. TNK dropping himself really low. Scarecrow coming in with the power slide. Gets kicked away. Yet again, this dragon just doesn't really like him very much. The red team still sticking around though. They want to set something up here. The stun in onto the Rega. Not too sure why they kicked him away, in fact. Force wall gonna be used. Root gonna connect into two. Dimensional shift by the Tassada to get away. And it does look like they are just gonna back off. Peiji wants more though. He is moving towards the front lines. His dragon is just about dead now. Muradin gonna connect with... What are they doing? The, st <laughs> the Muradin stunts in with the Stormboat. The Dragon Knight just kicks him away. So that's what happened in the middle lane as well when they caught the Rega. Is it miscommunication? I'm not too sure, but it's a bit confusing there. As now Budapest stuns in again onto the ETC. No latch on though. As the red team will secure themselves one set of siege camps, but that's going to be all. As that's the way they want to push down the bottom. Now the uh, Stormboat is going to connect onto the troll, but he's taking quite a bit of damage. Going to be healed right back up, however. Latch in now onto the ETC. Here comes the Greyman with the jump. Sundering going to be used. Force Wall as well to block them out. Now with the Malfurion Tranquility going to be popped right back up. Oh, he could be taking side damage. Li Ming finally going to fall here. Budapest Rome pushing in. Hothead Gaming are doing it get level 20. Nice, Mighty Gus. They're pushing three heroes back. This could be trouble for Play 10, lose 11 as they are in this array. Scarecrow running the wrong way here. He's going to get chased down. Kitcherak running in the background, trying to save his ETC. Ancestral healing going to be used to pop him right back up. But again, he's still running in the opposite direction. He's just trying to waste their time as much as he can. Nice teleport to get him away. Budapest probably going to be able to cancel out that mount though. But ETC will be able to power slide away for now. Will he be able to get away safely though? That is the question. Li Ming is still dead. I think the red team are pushing it a little bit too much with the chase. I think they should have just finished off the bottom fort as you can see here. But they were chasing down the ETC, committing a little bit too much time to that. ETC ultimately being able to get away. Here we see the stun though. Here comes the power slide with the latch on by the Dahaka. But the heals coming out from both the Rega and the shield of Tasada able to keep ETC alive now. Troll now in the background, He's dealing with the siege minions. Red team still not able to secure another set of forts. And 20 minutes into this game, only one set of forts down from both teams. Shrines are going to be activated as well. This is a pretty slow game so far. I think we're going to see an easy 30 minute game unless one team makes a mistake. Again, it is a best of three. The winner of this game will qualify for C Regionals next week, guys. Hothead Gaming and Play 10 lose 11. As you can see why they're both playing it so um, cautiously. They both don't want to make any mistakes because there's a lot on the line. C Regionals happening next week, guys. Make sure you guys tune in as the teams from the other qualified countries will be representing their teams, uh, their nations in the C Regionals. In Singapore, we will have Resurgence and Relics. Over on Malaysia, we have Black Sheep 5 as well as Sabun Gaming. And in Philippines, we will have Renovasha 1 and 2, also known as the Resistance. Here, though, we see GDG9 going to be the first team qualified. And Budapest going in with the stun onto Scarecrow. Nice Marsh Pit connecting on tree here. This could be really dangerous for Hot Hit Gaming. Mighty Guys going to be used to disengage. And that's going to help them quite a bit. But ETC still dropping really low. Neither side dropping any heroes just yet. Rhaegar popping up the Ancestral Healing onto the ETC. Popping him right back up. Ice Block on Alice to keep himself alive. But he goes down nonetheless. Greyman going to fall as well. And this is looking really bad for Hot Hit Gaming as he gets away. Barrel Roll by TNK to try and run here. Budapest is going to run mount up. But the blue team are in full attack mode. 50 seconds though 
on this respawn timer, and that's going to mean Dragon going in favor of the blue side and play 10 lose 11. Both teams now at level 21, still very much in this is Hothead Gaming. But 40 seconds on that respawn timer, I think that's going to mean that the blue side should be able to push down both the outer forts and maybe even get themselves a keep. Coupe now making their way towards the top lane. The Haka could be in some trouble himself. Arcane Orb going to be used to bring him down a little bit in terms of that damage. Here comes the Dragon though. They want to secure this fort to try and allow the Creep Wave to push in. TNK is going to come with the Lightning Rod trying to do some damage. Ooh, that Dragon chasing him so far back. Stopped by the gate, however. There comes the Fire Breath. Latch on to Scarecrow. He has to be careful not to drop down and get caught here too. Coupe will drop in with the rest of this team. Red side, they do have the bottom lane pushing out, so they don't have to worry about that. But the blue side will be able to secure two sets of forts, and that's going to help them a little bit. Not so much in EXP, but more in map control. Scarecrow now going in. Muradin going to be able to dwarf toss back to safety. It does look like the blue side. Play 10, lose 11. They want to pressure this a little bit more. They want to take down these towers, but they need to be careful as well. 23 minutes into this game right now. Still no keeps down. The Haka rotating towards that bottom just to push out that lane. He could have actually maybe gone for the push on the bottom sets of keeps. The wall is going to go down at the middle lane, leaving them a little bit open to that. Red team now giving chase. Scarecrow only 13 seconds left on his Dragonite. 10% HP. Red team wants to try and set same thing up here. We do see Peiji coming in front, but nice totem going to be used to slow him down and stop the chase. And that's going to be it. So the blue side will secure two forts, but that is all. As the Dragonite again will once fall. As both teams again slow down the pace of the game, going to pick up on a few siege camps, not wanting to make any mistakes. Here we see Budapest scouting it out a little bit on this siege camp themselves. He could be in some trouble himself though. ETC is going to spot him out. He's going to move from one brush to the other. Look at how cautiously both teams are playing. And neither wants to make any mistakes here. As you see now, again, you know, both teams just skirmishing against each other. Both playing a game of uh, Ring Around the Rosie right now. Not wanting to make the first mistake. Here comes Budapest. Thunderclap in onto that ETC. Peiji at the side getting hit by an Arcane Orb. But it does look like the red side is going to be the one to pressure at this bottom lane. A few of those siege camps are available. So it does look like they are just going to make their way towards those siege camps. So again, they're just going to slow down the matchup. Yeah, again, neither team wants to make any mistakes. Neither team wants to engage in here onto this match. ETC though could be in some trouble. He's waiting in that brush. He might not want to get caught here. Muradin could be in some trouble himself. Here comes the power slide with the face mount to push him back. Dwarf toss to jump away. Force wall in the right position. However, will be pushed away as well by the wave of force and he should be fine. So the red team will be able to pick up yet another siege camp. And again, after all that, nothing happened as both teams just disengage, go back to their lanes and defend it out. 25 minutes into this game, guys. Both teams just slowing the pace a little bit, waiting for the opponents to make a mistake. If you're just tuning in, this is the Heroes Global Summer Circuit. Thailand Finals happening right now. One team, GDG9, Greed is good, 9999 plus, have already qualified for C Regionals next week. They are awaiting the winner of this matchup to face them in the finals for both seeding and prize money. So make sure you guys mark down your calendars. Happening next Saturday and Sunday, the C Regionals will be happening. Now Budapest running into ETC. He's taking quite a bit of damage, dropping below half HP. He has to be careful. Who's going to be topped right back up by that Milfurion for now? But it is, of course, a healing over time. So she, he has to be careful. Here comes the Scarecrow. Nice force wall going to be used. Tranquility going to be popped now as the clash is imminent. Here comes the Muradin jumping in, but he will be able to teleport in that ETC. Literally in the side there with the troll. Trying to set something up here, but the rest of the team is coming in now with the ETC power slide. No mosh pit just yet. He's going to get rooted down. Force wall on the wrong side as they are going to get out. But look at this Muradin. He could be in some trouble. The totem going to be used. Dwarf toss away. Will he be kept alive? Mighty Gas going to be used to disengage. And again, after all that, no mistakes remain. And everyone just backs off and no one dies. 
So as I was mentioning earlier, make sure you guys tune in next Saturday and Sunday. We will be having the C Regionals, where each country will be represented by two teams to play. Next set of shrines are going to be activated right now. The red side will be able to get the moonshine at the bottom, while Troll will be able to get the sun one at the top. ETC now going to run into... Oh, latch in onto ETC. Power side to get away. Rhaegar going to pop the ancestral healing just to keep him top up. They do not want to lose the ETC in that scenario, of course. Peiji now just waiting in the brush, trying to set maybe another hookup. Ooh, almost walking into the brush. Budapest himself could be in some trouble now. Taking quite a bit of damage with the latch now onto the ETC. Pulls him back a little bit. Root not going to connect. Magic Missile doing quite a bit of damage here. We see the ETC power slide. Budapest dropping low. Avatar going to be used here. Sundering going to be used as well to throw out. Peiji going to dig, burrow himself into the ground. Mighty Gust, a bit of a off Mighty Gust there. Not really doing much, but now they are chasing. Latch in onto ETC and down he goes. No Marsh Pit available for the blue side and they will have to back off here. Dimensional Shift by Tassada running away. They want him though. Root is going to connect and here comes the Barrel Roll pushing him on the other side. Lightning Rod is going to be able to finish off Tassada and Hot Hit Gaming, they are doing it. The Haka is going to rotate towards the top, picking up the Sunshine. That's going to activate the Dragon Knight for the red team. And they could very well end this game right here, right now. The rest of the blue side are going to be able to hurt back to the base. ETC, 30 seconds on his respawn timer. Tassada, 50 seconds on his. The red team now pushing down with the Dragon Knight. This could very well be GG, guys. Tassada. Still 40 seconds left on his timer. Wave of Four is going to be used to try and delay this. But here comes the Dragon. Kicks Kichirok all the way back to his uh, base. As they hit down onto this keep. They could easily just go for core and focus this down. It does look like that's what they're trying to do. The Dragon is trying to push up front. Go again, going to kick, kick Chirok back to his hero as well. It does look like they want to push down this core. Will they have a successful defense? ETC is going to spawn right back up. Alice is going to pop the Tranquility, but the Dragon is doing so much damage. This could very well be GG. I think they are going to be able to do it. Mighty Gas can be used, and it is going to be GG. Hot Hit Gaming with one push will be able to end it. And unfortunately, they have for Play 10, lose 11. 11, they will fall short of that. That was a really long game. 28 minutes into this, Hot Hit Gaming finally secured themselves the win and they will be going up against GDG9 in the finals for first and second placing as well as the prize pool money. We do have a replay available of the last clash. Let's see what happened uh, where ETC, I believe, got caught. As we see there, Peiji burrows into the ground. ETC comes in from the side, gets latched on, and then he gets, gets taken down. He gets pulled away from the rest of his team, gets taken down, and then the rest of the blue team just in disarray has to disengage. Tassada tried to pull the, the enemies away from the chase, but in fact, he gets taken down himself. And at the top lane as well, Troll will have to back off. And with two heroes down, that just led to the fact that the Dragon Knight will be taken up by Hothead Gaming. And just like that, with one push, they will be able to secure their win. Congratulations to Hothead Gaming for qualifying for the C Regionals. We have our final team qualified for the C Regionals, guys. And it's going to be Hothead Gaming joining GDG9 and the rest of the other teams from the other countries playing in the C Regionals. Now, we will be going into the Grand Finals, guys. Stay tuned because you are tuning into the Heroes Global Circuit. We will be going into the finals of the Thailand Finals happening right now. Best of five, GDG9 going up against Hot Hit Gaming. They will have one game in hand. Be right, be right back, guys, as we do set up for the next game. Uh, do stay tuned because we will be right back. Done, but the nice power slide will cancel it out. Mary Knox gets pushed back. Tyrande could be in some trouble, but TNK himself dropping real low. Here comes the foul start. Flying in from the side will finish him off with the lightning rod. But Tracer blinks in in three quick successions. And with the rewind, we'll get the Tyrande with the.